Michael Gentile is a strategic resource investor and has been a fund manager for more than a decade. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. I think we're in, we're in store for new highs for gold for sure by the end of the year. Uh, I've been on your show a few times, uh, Ivan and Jim. Thanks to have me back again. Uh, but you know, I meant we're laughing about transitory inflation with you guys about 18 months ago and how the <laughs> Fed was out to lunch and they were completely missing the boat on inflation. I remember coming back on and saying, you know, by the time the Fed gets serious about fighting inflation and they start raising rates, they're going to cause serious havoc in the markets. And that's unfortunately for all of us, the home stocks have come to pass in a dramatic way the last uh, three to six months. But I also said that the act of the Fed actually starting to fight inflation, while it's going to hurt in the short term and our portfolios are all feeling the pain from that, from the result of those actions, was actually what we needed to set the stage for gold to make new all time highs. So I'm actually very excited by what I'm seeing, very constructive by what I'm seeing, because the playbook's kind of unfolding as I, I hoped it would. Now, the market to market's not fun, the, the stock's being down, it's not fun. But the reality is, I think the Fed is very, very close to causing a major train wreck or having to pivot or, or pull back. And we can talk about reasons as to why I feel that way. But mm. the second the Fed clears their throat or sort of mentions to the market that their hiking cycle is almost done, and I feel they're pretty close to that maximum point of hawkishness right now, that's when gold's going to really take off. And so I do, I do feel very constructive about gold in the back half of the year. I do think gold's going to make you know, new all-time highs in the back half of this year into next year. Couple that with how terribly the stocks are trading right now provides a pretty incredible entry point opportunity for investors that, that want to put some capital work in the gold sector. Yeah, I mean, so as, as sleepy as the Fed was when they talked about transitory inflation, I think they're equally asleep at the wheel here when they think if they can just raise rates 75 basis points at a shot without causing havoc in the financial markets and the global economy. And, you know, I've talked to you guys before about my, my US debt thesis, which is very simple math. I'm a simple person, you know, $30 trillion of debt you know, doesn't go away. And so when rates are zero, your servicing cost on $30 trillion of debt is pretty close to zero. When, when interest rates go up to four or 5% where the Fed thinks they can take them, well, that $30 trillion of debt now costs you $1.5 trillion a year just on interest. And just for, for your viewers' uh, knowledge, you know, the US took in about $3 trillion of revenue, tax revenue in 2019. Any yeah. company, any individual has 50% of their revenue going to just service the interest on their debt is pretty much insolvent. So this graph here, wow. Jim, just shows you as the debt has increased, right? Every time that the Fed raises rates too high, this is the five-year yield in the Fed fund rate. That's basically the blended cost of debt, short-term and you know, medium-term debt financing for the US government. When that gets too high and multiplied by the national debt, you have a crisis. And you can see the different crises. We can go through each of these crises, the dot-com bubble, the housing bubble, you know, the 2018 uh, mini crash when they tried to raise rates. These are all, this is, happens, it's pure math. You know, interest, debt doesn't go away. Interest costs eat things up and it eats up the consumer's wallet, it eats up the federal government's wallet and then forces them to pull back because they don't have the money to spend on essential services or their personal budgets as consumers would have. So this is a very powerful chart. And you think about them hiking 75 basis points in two weeks, they're going to blow right through that blue line, right? So we're going to be in new uncharted territory in terms of the strain and pressure they're putting on the system with these rate hikes, which is why I feel they're very, very close to the end of the second cycle here. You're going to choose between fighting fighting inflation and causing a massive depression or causing yeah. a massive global mishap. And that's that typically to get a tap on the shoulder from the IMF or one of the other central banks saying, look, you go any farther here, we're, we're toast. We can't go any, this is causing too much strain on our system, our banking systems, our economies are collapsing. The Fed has can operate in a vacuum. They can't only think about US. They might have to tolerate a higher level inflation that they're comfortable with. So lower real negative rates, we've talked about in the past, in order to keep the system afloat, the global financial system afloat, not just the US, you know, fighting inflation with tunnel like vision. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. I mean, they're already dealing with massive energy prices, supply shortages, crippling, you know, issues in their economy. The U.S. dollar going up 1% a week is like kicking them in the teeth every single week when they're, when they're down and desperate for help. So, you know, if you, I remember if you guys saw three weeks ago, I think the ECB, just when the rates like after the first 75 basis point hike, the ECB called an emergency meeting to deal with the peripheral European states, Italy, the Greece, the Portugal, the world. I mean, the Italian bond was only 4% and they're already calling an emergency meeting to deal with how they're going to deal with this. It shows you how uh, unequipped the European economies are to deal with higher rates, even less so than the US. So by raising rates here, it puts even more and more pressure on those yields and these peripheral European countries that can't afford the interest on their debt either. So we're all intertwined and we all can't afford the rates that they're trying to push into the economy to slow inflation 
again, which is almost like a broken record, which is why I think the Fed is very close to having a pivot here. So we talked a lot about the macro and the, you know, the pressure on the federal government, the European governments. That's all big picture where the central bankers get together and go, look, we're creating a massive problem. But the micro level, which is a lot easier for your viewers to understand and why I think the economy is slowing in real time and why, again, the micro level, the US economy is 70, 80% consumer driven. So what, what the consumer health and what the consumer is doing is extremely important for the US economy's health and will dictate what the Federal Reserve does with future rate hikes. Think about what's most important to consumers, having a place to sleep and put their head at night and, and filling their tummies with food, right? So those two things right now, if you're a consumer and then driving to your work, wherever you drive, wherever you work, you probably have to drive and put gasoline in your car. Those three things have gone through the roof. So if you're a consumer that wants to buy a house or find lodging, you know, a year ago, your average monthly mortgage payment was $1,000. If you go to buy a home today, it's 18 to 1900. It's an 80 to 90% increase in your monthly lodging costs. So that's that's yeah. huge. Most most people and that most people have their housing costs thirty to forty percent of their of their monthly budget. So you double that, eighty percent of your budget's now suddenly go into your mortgage. So that's unsustainable. So either you're trading down to a smaller house or you're in financial distress. Yeah. So then so then you go to the grocery store and you see where you know grain prices, wheat, corn, and soybeans are all up anywhere from one hundred to one hundred twenty percent over the last six to twelve months as well. So you, your your mortgage payments are probably doubled. So that's eating away at your disposable income. Your your food basket at the grocery store is up anywhere from 30 to 100%, depending on what you're buying. And then finally, if you want to drive to work, you're filling up your car with gasoline, it costs 100% more than it did you know, a year ago. So the disposable income of the consumer is under severe pressure. And you only have to look at the quarters from Target and Walmart that came out about three, four weeks ago. They both missed their quarters. They both had a similar refrain. They said the percentage of the consumer's basket going to food, the necessity eating, right, went way up. And there's disposable income to clothing, DVDs, uh, hard goods, whatever that is, went way down. And therefore, the margins on food are much lower than they are on the disposable items. That's very bad for the economy, right? Because your disposable purchases, your vacations, your restaurant trips, your big screen TVs, all that stuff that drives the economy, there's less and less money the consumer has to spend on those things. So the Fed's looking at backwards looking economic data still looks okay with some softening. The forward looking data is going to accelerate dramatically the downside because the consumer just doesn't have the money to spend on what he was spending a year ago or, or 18 months ago. So that's just numbers, again, logical numbers coming through saying the economy is going to slow down. So rising rates into a slowing economy also is a pretty toxic recipe because you're going to be putting more pressure on the consumers that are already feeling quite a bit of pressure today. They can try, but pull up our happy Hawaiian tweet from earlier in the show, and you'll see that they, their ability to finance that, where's the money going to come from? Right? Well, the, the, Fed has to, the Fed has to change, right? And, and, so, so and you're, you're, essentially finance it. We've already talked about half of their revenues got going to interest payments if they keep rates where they are, right, going forward. And so they'd have to print new money or have much larger deficits in the future. You can only finance those deficits if you're printing money back. Hello, QE. Hello, suppression of interest rates. So, so that, again, that, that's it's feeding back. We're coming to the same conclusion again and again. But this the theme of this interview is the Fed has to stop or pivot at some point in time in the next three to six months because the numbers just don't add up. And that, that's yes. simple to, to get your head around. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1000 available, and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. 
or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below. Enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Markus Dahn.